Well, kia ora whanau. Good to um, see you all. My goodness, what a big crew we've got this afternoon, eh? Anyone would think you hadn't got anything better to do with your Fallen's Day. It must be level four lockdown in Tamaki Makoto. Now, if you're seeing um, the screen, don't forget to um, post your comments if you've got any questions. Today, of course, is what we're loosely calling Fuck a Papa Thursday. Um, and Fuck a Papa Thursday is all very much about us talking about what Fuck a Papa means, but more importantly, um, you know, share your Fuck a Papa with us as well. Have you got any burning questions? We're also going to be talking about the importance of whānau. Um, what is it that's uh, the meaning of whānau? Is it all just about our siblings and brother and sister that, you know, we wake up to in the same household sort of thing every day? Actually, in the Te Ao Māori world, it's completely different. Whānau is a, is a, has a deeper and stronger and larger meaning than just about what might be happening in our own whanes. And of course, joining me has to be one of the most incredible ladies, one of the most incredible uh, doyans of all things Te Ao Māori. Her name is, of course, Dame Nada Glavish. Nada, welcome. Kia ora, kia ora to you and to everyone out there. Kia ora. Can I just say, you are looking extremely lovely this, uh, this fine Thursday. It, it's like the angels have all of a sudden appeared in your whare. <laughs> <laughs> it lives here. The angel it lives here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how are you going in, in level four lockdown? All good? All, all good, all good. Everything is by Zoom. I prefer yeah. face to face, but yeah, all good. We're still making connections. Well, that's good. Eh? And, and you've got to maintain those connections because really yeah. that's what actually what Fucker Papa is all about. And, yeah. and I thought what would be good for our audience, um, and there's a lot of comments coming through already, so thank you, Farno. Um, what for you um, is, is your meaning, the meaning of Fucker Papa through, through your lens? Because I know having been on the road with you and spending a lot of time with you, you talk about um, looking at the world through that, that Māori eye, the Māori lens. But what is Fucker Papa to you? Can, you? can you just share with us? Well, in actual fact, Fucker Papa. Um, is being connected, of course, but it's a lineage. Mm. It's a lineage in which uh, you inherit from birth. And then strange things happen to you when you leave the sacred womb um, and the safety of your mother's womb and come into this world. All sorts of things uh, happen to you, but no one can take from you the sacredness of your link from the womb of your mother to your inherited whakapapa, your inherited genealogy. And, um, of course, there's several avenues in which one can take in terms of whakapapa. And, of course, one avenue is like the trunk of a tree and then the branches of a tree. And, of course, the whakapapa from the trunk of the tree is known as tātai heke. And the tātai heke is the genealogy direct from a particular ancestor down that trunk to you. And then there's whakapapa in connectedness to your Fano, your hapu, to your iwi, to your aunties and uncles and cousins. So Papa is about relationships and it's about connectedness to those relationships. And of course, Whakapapa is, 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 is kind of like a mixed bag too. I mean, for example, my, my own Whakapapa, and I, I want you to share yours too, if that's all right. But just from my perspective, um, of course, I'm proudly Māori. Um, you know, I, I, um, I have my Ngātai side, my grandmother, um, Barbara Tukaki, is a Ni Ngātai. Um, our tūpuna is Hori Ngātai at um, Whariroa Marae there in uh, Mount Monganui. And of course, uh, my grandfather is a Tukaki, and we fuck a papa right back um, to our tūpuna name, well, Tukaki, that's our ancestor, his son Tamahai. My middle name is Tamahai. And Tamahai is another name that's passed down through um, our whānau as well. And then on my, my other side, and I know my grandmother Anne is tuning in, 96 years old, my grandmother Anne down there in Upper Hutt, uh, rings me and tells me off all the time, whānau. Um, but that's the Irish ancestry. Um, she's a Gregory, my pop was an O'Flaherty. Um, hell, even my uh, great-great-grandfather was naughty as all heck, Nader. He was a pirate in Australia. He was a, he was a <laughs> bastard storyteller that fellow years ago. 
but it is about all sides and all aspects of, of our whakapapa, eh? Well, can, talk to us about yours, because you have one of the most interesting last names I, I, uh, I, I know. Well, um, yes. So on my mother's side, um, absolutely Ngāti Hine and uh, Ngāpuhi, Ngāti Whātua. And on my father's side, well, my grandfather comes from a place in Croatia um, that's known as uh, uh, Kots, Kotsitsa. And my grandmother comes from Croatia on the Adriatic co coast from a little town called uh, Drivenik. And so half of me comes from over there and the other half comes from over here. And the two grandmothers lived across the road from each other. Neither could speak English. And I bounced between the two of them uh, right up to the age of five, six, nearly eight. And, um, and it was very interesting because to be raised by grandparents is mm. to be raised by that era, that generation. And, uh, and the values also of that generation that never kind of leaves you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's whakapapa's good. And, of course, on my Māori side, there is a relationship to the Irish. Oh, hey, All hey. the redheads in our whānau definitely <laughs> come down that Irish whakapapa. <laughs> it's, and we had, we had the pleasure also of working with a young Irish fellow recently. Uh, we'll just call him Paddy. And it was, a, it was a really good little experience. But, you know, talking about your whakapapa, my whakapapa, and also the whakapapa of all of those tuning in, and there's, there's quite a few people tuning in right now, um, they, with that, um, that mixed bag, I, I guess you could call it, comes that richness of humanity, eh? I mean, we are the different some parts of all of our ancestors. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and the difference in the, in the generations as mm. well in terms of the, of the whakapapa. And the most powerful in whakapapa, of course, are the stories. And, and our relationship to whakapapa is we usually relate to where they are buried. Mm. And so um, there's a relationship in terms of iwi uh, intermarriages for the whakapapa and where they are buried. And so we claim a whole range of iwi relationships as well, mm -hmm. or hapu relationships based on the intermarriages. Well, that's right. I mean, that, well, for us in particular, you know, we've got, we've got Naitara, I've got Naitarangi on one side. Of course, I come from the great sovereign nation uh, of uh, sovereign nation of Matakana Island, but, you know, kapai. Um, but then there's um, Fano Wapanui up the road. Um, there's uh, uh, somebody from the other day was trying to trying to convince me that I'm Nazi Pharo and, and so on and so forth. But actually, it is a semblance that our, um, over, over many generations, we haven't just stayed in the same place. In fact, Māori are a very transient people. Even um, our whānau, um, and there's hundreds of thousands of them now living in places like Australia, um, and they're all buried in Australia. And so they then become parts of our story as well, don't they? Yes, absolutely. Def and definitely um, with, with whakapapa and tātai heke, the coming directly down the trunk of the tree of genealogy, um, you would descend, of course, from what we would call atuatanga. We we are uh, the living, uh, the living descendants of of the the gods, so to speak. Um, we didn't descend from the planet of the apes, I can assure you. We have <laughs> descended from 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 godlikes, and um, and and that fucker papa has been um, a really, really good place to be so that you're not lost in yourself. Um, if you yeah. don't know your whakapapa, there's that tendency to be lost in yourself and not sure where your tūranga waiwai is. And, you know, we, we've, for, for, for us, having been on the road um, uh, for, for a little while now, and having met some extraordinary young people in some some very difficult situations, 
um, you know, I do lament whether or not they understand their whakapapa. And indeed, there was one occasion, and I won't go into it far no, where it was clear that some of them didn't, or if they didn't, they didn't understand the, the value of whakapapa so much. Um, and for our young people in particular, it's really important because the more they know about where they come from, the more they understand where they stand, eh? Yeah, absolutely. When I was a school teacher, a secondary school teacher, uh, a man appeared at the door of our classroom uh, and he had this young boy with him and said to me, um, I'm not bringing you a student. I am bringing you my whakapapa, so look after him. Mm. And that's a concept of whakapapa. He wasn't bringing me a student at all. Yeah. He was bringing me his whakapapa. And so the grandfather in my classroom, there were so many in there who didn't know their grandfathers. And so mm. the one who came to bring me his whakapapa became the grandfather to others in the classroom and, and he was happy to take on that role with the young in my classroom. And, and let's talk about whānau as well as part of whakapapa because we, you know, um, uh, we all have whānau um, that have been whānau. Um, you know, some appear um, early on in, in, in life and then some take a while for them to rediscover um, their, their whakapapa through whānau. But whānau, um, whānau um, children and, and even those who are in adulthood uh, it's it's much more important for them to know where they come from too, because otherwise they, they spend years possibly in the void. So if I can explain uh, Reo Māori and explain our, um, our living within an environment and understanding the environment we live in, the term whāngai came from the bird life. For instance, the pipi whāroroa is the bird that takes and just lays its eggs in anybody's nest. Mm. And then it lays its eggs and abandons them. And then the riro riro bird comes along and nurtures the eggs of the pipi faroroa and until it hatches and, and until it's old enough to fly the coop. That's what whangai is all about. It's about nurturing eggs that belong to someone else nurturing mm -hmm. babies, children that belong to someone else gave birth to, but loving that as if you gave birth yourself. And so whāngai are as much of a whānau as those who were born within it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, well let, let's also talk about whānau a little bit as well then, um, because um, whānau is complex. Well, not complex, but whānau comes in many different colours, numbers, branches, and, well, feathers, eh? Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, I do lament, again, I'm lamenting, whether or not we understand the concept of whānau um, and, and this mad rush of, of we're all moving so quickly and so fast through life these days. You know, I, I remember growing up in, um, in, in up you know, mum and dad didn't have much at all. Um, but what they had, they worked hard. My, you know, Dad was working two jobs um, during the week. He was a rubber worker at Dunlops. He, um, he was a uh, plumber and gas fitter and drain layer during the weekends, a roofer, come roofer. Mum was working at a cafe at night, um, licenses at Ministry of Transport during the week. She was uh, pouring pints at the RSA. You know, one thing I remember about my mum is uh, she would come home um, and she'd smell of donuts on the weekend, having worked in the cafe and, and booze on, on weeknights because she was pouring <laughs> pints. But Farno for us wasn't just about me and my, my little brother, Michael, um, who's an exceptional young man, my sister, Rachel, and even my older brother, Ruben. Um, actually, it's more extensive than that. But just in that Farno concept of siblings, you've got a great way of describing the relationship between siblings. Can you, can you share that? Well, in terms of um, Farno. Fano begins with the birth. That's the word to giving birth, ka fano mai. And so fano begins with the birth, the sacred wombs of their mothers. And um, in, in that, <clears throat> when, um, when I was growing up, for instance, in our little town on the shores of the Kaipara Harbour, um, home was whichever auntie's bread was coming out of the oven while you were walking past. And you called in and you stayed there and went 
back to school from there and then went home and, and no one missed you, no one looked for you because you were home. You were in the community whānau at that time. And in terms of um, whānau and the embracing of whānau, um, you know, we, the, everyone born within a whānau is born, the first born is a mata mua. Mm -hmm. And that mata mua is born with a responsibility. It's not just being born first. The first born is responsible that the parents would take when the parents are not there, the mata mua steps in. And so from the mata mua, we have the tuakana. And the tuakana is responsible for the tena, the younger one. Responsibility is what is born into whānau. And the brother, the tungane to the tuahine, is a responsibility the brother has for his sister. And the sister has towards her younger sister. And there's responsibilities within a whānau that mm. have been in some whānau today forgotten and not, um, not given any consideration to because that concept of whānau, tuakana teina, mata, mua, tungane, tuahine in the whānau is no longer used and those terminologies and the responsibilities that go with those terminologies um, are, are no longer applied. And, and that's yeah. the sad part about it, until someone dies. Isn't and it, then the whānau kicks in. They, they do kick in. We, we, I mean, we're, we're great in coming together, but it, it is interesting you say that because we do, feel, sometimes it does feel as if, you know, often in life as individuals, we get a little bit lost. Um, and, and in today's fast world, like I said before, um, knowing what that relationship is, it's not just uh, your brother or sister, there's a role that each one of us plays. Uh, and, and maybe that is something that we really need to get out there again, you know, make it very clear for the whole world to see that this is how it works. This is how it's always yeah, yeah, worked. Yeah, so it's more about rediscovering it, eh? Um, and true. And, mm. and, and, you know, it's a wonderful thing to rediscover it because there's a strengthening in there in the reconnection. Mm. And, um, and for those um, who are born uh, um, no tuakana and no tena, for instance, they connect to their first cousins or mm. they connect to uh, cousins, buddies and, and, and create whānau. Mm. That's what was originally um, the gangs were. They were whānau. They were discovering each other in an urban situation and became a whānau. Mm. It was the courts of this country that called them gangs. You know, I was with um, Iritana Tafifirangi recently. We drove up to the Hawke's Bay, um, and oh, what, a, what an absolute pleasure, eh? It's kind of like when I when I talk to yeah, you, and yeah. and um, and we have so much fun, but there's so much knowledge coming out. Anyway, we're having we're driving up to the Hawke's Bay, um, and we were talking to um, a, a group of of um, gang members. Uh, and I said to them, look, you know, I don't see you as gang members. I see you as whānau. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you may or may not have done um, or what um, patch you might wear on your back. Hell, it could be the mongrel mob one day, the black power the next day. It doesn't matter. You're still whānau. And, and if we're going to be more inclusive with everybody, we've got we've to open up our hearts a little bit more than we have been doing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because... Um... Uh, they they come from the same mother as we come from. They do, don't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 they do. Hey, um, now there is the the, the other thing. I I I know we've we've only got a few short minutes, but I, I I'm just reading some of the comments that are coming through. Um, our uh, my auntie Maybell wants a bit of a shout out. Hello, auntie Maybell. I know you're oh, tuning in. Kia ora, kia ora well. to akana. <laughs> um, you know, and we've got some really great comments from Thomas Harrison, uh, Michelle Downs, and James Emerson, um, Khan. Uh, Paniora and Patrick Tawaki. Fini Marko Black, thank you, Fini Marko. Really pleased you're tuning in. Kia and so they're all saying the same things. It's really, really interesting that we're having this conversation today 
um, because actually it's even at times of, of great peril, like lockdown, for example, um, just the amazing spirit of Māori and Fano coming together, um, you know, uh, for all the politicians that bloody David Seymour, the hua. But anyway, all <laughs> these, um, <laughs> I had to get that in. But, but you know, you have a look at what's going on around the country, our, our, um, our Fano and Hoarder, um, the stuff that's going on with Waipareta in West Auckland. I mean, you are at work today. Yes. Um, you know, uh, they're at the, at the hospital, uh, you know, uh, Kaipex, um, people are, are picking up our Komatra and elders to take them to the vaccination yes. centres and so on and so yes. forth. But actually, when, when, when Māori come together, we come together not just in a big way, we, we, we come together in a way that includes everybody, not just us. Yes, absolutely, because every tribe in this country have a common responsibility. And mm. that responsibility is to manaki all manuhiri who are in your tribal rohe. Mm. And we've never forgotten that. And we still apply it. We and apply think... it in our rohe. We apply it in our homes, on our marae. Everything that's us is manaki tangata. And, and you know what? And that what makes us unique and special. So for all those uh, David Seymour fellows out there, may this be a lesson to you. It's not too late to come back to the farm, no, David. Not too late, son. <laughs> hey, um, I, I wanted to end on, on one story um, that you that you that you share that's really stayed with me, um, and it's it's both inspiring and a lesson in life. And this is the story that you told me about the candles, um, oh. and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love it. I and, okay. and I want to, I want everyone to know this is not my story, right, you fellas? This has been told to me by by one of the preeminent doyans of, as I said, of Tel Marty Dame Nada Glavishin. And I wonder, before we close off, could you could you share that, yes, that story? Of course. Okay, so thank you for that, um, um, Matthew. Um, there were four candles glowing in a room, and. As energy would have it, they were speaking to each other. And so the first candle said, you know what? I am the candle of peace and I shine the light of peace to the world, but no one wants to see my light. Countries are at war with each other and families are at war with each other. Brothers are arguing with each other. There's so much dissension in the world, no one wants to see my light, so I may as well go out. And bling, out went the candle of peace. So the second candle said, well, you know what? I'm the candle of faith. I shine the light of faith to the world. And if there is no faith, we can have no peace. And so I too will go out and bling, out went the candle of faith. The third candle said, you know what? I am the candle of love. And of course, there is no love where there is war. And so there's no faith, there's no love, we can have no peace and blink, out went the candle of love, leaving one candle glowing in the room. Then this child walked into the room. I have to say it was probably a Ngāti a child <laughs> that walked into the room and looked at the remaining candle and said, Hey, what's the matter with your mates? How come your mates have gone out? And the remaining candle said, it's all right, my child, for you see, with me, I am the candle of hope. And with me, I can relight the other three, which leaves us with a challenge to every one of us. Keep that candle of hope going and with it, relight wherever we can, the other three candles. Kia ora. And Fano, that's a, that's a really good um, uh, lesson, uh, a really good story to end on, because at the end of the day, Whakapapa and Fano um, and reconnecting with each other and uh, with whomever, wherever they might be, even though we might all be in lockdown, the, the magic of the technology now enables us to still stay connected. And for all of our children out there, our tamariki, our mukupuna, our rangatahi, our young people, I, look, I still like to think I might be rangatahi adjacent, but I think I'm getting past that now. Oh, oh we. Um, but for <laughs> all of us, it is about maintaining that hope. Um, whatever troubles we might be going through, whatever might be happening in our lives, whatever struggles there might be, um, there is always that candle of hope um, that Dame Nader has talked about. Uh, and also it's in with each one of us 
um, to ensure that we keep those home fires burning. Um, if you don't know your whakapapa or two, uh, you don't know where to learn about your whakapapa, trust me, uh, all, it, the, all you need is a conversation with any Māori in town and they'll probably line you up and tell you exactly where you come from. Um, they might have a few choice words if it's me, but um, uh, never be afraid to reach out. Um, Dame Nader Glavish, it is an absolute pleasure to um, even be in your universe uh, you're an inspiration. Um, you are probably one of the most knowledgeable people in all things Te Māori I know. And if I ever run for political office, uh, I'd love you to be the campaign manager. <laughs> <laughs> be my Naughty privilege. Day. It <laughs> would be my privilege. <laughs> Whānau, have a, have a wonderful, restful rest of the day. Really love you, Flowers. Um, make sure you heed those wise words. And, and remember, no matter where you are, don't put up with cone heads and whoers, even if they're your own Thano, just give them a quick hug and a kiss on the cheek. Kia ora. Kia ora. Right. Ka kite, Thank you. Matua. Matua. Kia ora.